Amen. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Do we have the best father in uh, America? Amen. And just honor Apostle Mark as the father of the house and how good he's been to me. I always say he's the steadying influence. He's like a swan and just keeps the whole church steady. You know, good morning, North Palm. And then at the end of the service, we go from victory to victory to victory. But um, there's something about the stabilizing factor and the anointing. And we were sitting in the back and the different people were honoring him. I've got to watch time. Otherwise, uh, that clock will shoot me in the head again and I don't want to be shot in the head, right? But um, <clears throat> I just bless the Lord for... Um, all that America means to us as a family and all that you've done for us, all that Apostle Mark, Patricia, and the family here have done. And um, it just means so much in terms of, we left South Africa and uh, uh, David McDonald had prophesied we'd come here like Ruth, empty-handed. And Zell said, that can't be because we're selling our house and cars and all that in South Africa. And so when we get here, we'll have money. And, uh, but COVID hit, we got here a month before COVID, COVID hit and we had to keep paying the monthly mortgages and all kinds of stuff and it just vacuumed all our finance up. And uh, so we were set in a place of standing by faith even for a car, but I tell you beloved, God has done so much, it's now our fifth year here and uh, Zell and I were talking again yesterday about how we marvel at uh, the protection and provision of God our Father. So would you just lift your hands to the Father today? It's Father's Day and we honor fathers and mothers, but we wanna talk about our Heavenly Father. And Father, you just so love us. Lord, we are the apple of your eye, the focus of your attention, your eyes in every place to show yourself strong on our behalf. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, that through you we have access to the Father. And that Holy Spirit, today you would move and minister to every person. We thank you that you are the one that heals the broken heart, binds up every wound, that Lord, you make the crooked places straight, and Lord, you infuse into every life revelation knowledge. We thank you that you open the eyes of our understanding, that we might know you experientially and intimately, Father as a Father that you would reveal yourself to us today, that you'd put your arms around each one, not only here but online in the name of Jesus, that Father, you would put your arms around each one. We know that underneath are your everlasting arms, but draw us to your bosom. And we thank you for a heavenly experience in the name of Jesus beyond anything that this world could ever offer. Father, anybody outside of your family, we thank you that today that changes. Because you said, Lord, if we receive Jesus, we'll be born into your family. And so we give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory in advance. In Jesus' name, we release the power of the blood of Jesus over this place and through every airwave. We thank you for the power of the blood of God. We thank you, Lord, that the blood of Jesus releases every person from demonic strongholds and anything that would hold him, every chain broken in the name of Jesus, every cord loosed in the name of Jesus, that Father, there would be, as you said, Lord, healing as the children's bread in the name of Jesus Christ. And everybody said, amen. The word will not return void. He sent his word to heal them and he watches over his word to perform it. I have been amazed over these years um, as I've just preached the word. You watch churches grow, you see things happen and you know it's got nothing to do with us. Uh, Ronald Bonker once said, the word of God in your mouth is the same as the word of God in his mouth. And so it doesn't matter how old you are, how fat, thin, whatever, tall, short, if you've got the Word of God in your mouth, God is in your mouth. Would you say, God is in my mouth when I preach the Word? Hallelujah. Now, um, I want to watch my time, but I, I did see standing here, there's people in the area of your bones, uh, in the hip and the one, another in the neck, uh, somebody with only one kidney, you only have one kidney. And so I'm just going to keep flowing, but as we preach, anointings flow and people get healed. I mean, I've been healed and I was sitting at the back there and uh, Apostle Mark had a word about a meniscus and I battled to walk from my car to my seat there in one of the conferences here and uh, with the agony in my knee. And um, he said, meniscus. I turned to Pastor Stafford sitting used to me. I said, what's meniscus? He said, that's part of the knee. I said, that's me. And I ran from there. I jumped on it. 
Would you say faith is acting on the Word? So when a word of knowledge comes, you act on it, right? And I jumped on and I ran on that knee and by the time I got to the front here, I was healed. Now, I, I spoke, I spoke on, on uh, Wednesday night on healing because I do the healing classes when you come into the church and I was sharing with them what happened last week. Didn't Apostle Mark preach a message last week on kingdom? And Jesus said, when the kingdoms come, then the Holy Ghost is gonna demonstrate. And so at the end of the message, I was standing back there. I'd said to Zell, I have absolute agony in my one ear. They said there's some particular disease going around. I thought, what is this? And I'd taken a little medication, but it wasn't working. And I said to Zell, man, I said, this pain is excruciating. And standing there, would you say rivers of healing? Healing waters. Just as we were at the end here worshiping, the Holy Spirit, just a river of healing, went straight through my ear and I was healed instantly. So beloved, when you sit under the word, make a demand, open your heart, release your faith because God is in the house. And when I came to um, North Palm, the Lord said to me, this would be a house of healing and showed me 5,000 people. And uh, Luke 4, 18 and 19 is the verse that God gave me over my own ministry. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, sent me to preach deliverance to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those that are bruised, and to preach the jubilee year of the Lord. That's to bring people into their inheritance. And the Lord said, if we stay with Luke 4, 18, 19, which is the ministry of Jesus, the Messiah, the anointed one, we will see 5,000 people. And uh, that was in the portal and I'm watching God grow the church week by week by week because he will build his church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. So as we talk about the Father today, I want you to see this old apostle, this wonderful man of God. He's one of my heroes. When I get to heaven first is to Father, Son and Holy Spirit and then I'm gonna look for the apostle Paul. And can you imagine this old wily apostle as tough as nails, amen, moving in the power of God and he goes down on his knees and he prays in Ephesians 3 from verse 14. He says, for this reason, I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ from whom the whole family, would you say whole family? The whole family in heaven and earth is named that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the length, breadth, depth and height to know the love of God which passes knowledge, being filled with all the fullness of God. Now unto him who's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you could ever ask or think, to him be, uh, according to the power that works in it, and to him be the glory in the church. So the Father, beloved, is one that loves us, and this apostle bowed his knees to the Father. The sad thing is, many Christians don't have a relationship with the Father. I remember I'd run away from home when I was a kid, now, my first time, I was six years of age. I won't go into it all because I did, in the end, lead, lead my father to Christ and was at his deathbed when he died and he apologized for whatever had happened. But uh, there were so many wonderful things about him. But unfortunately, he had a father wound. His father had died when he was uh, in his early teens. And uh, there were three boys, six girls, and of course they hit abject poverty and he had to go through a really tough time himself without going to all the details, but he carried a father wound. Now when we talk father wound, what'll happen often is when there's a deficient father in the home, the child will hanker after the love of the father. So if the father leaves or he's an absent father because the, absent, the average father spends about six minutes a day with their children, right? Or if there's something wrong with that father, if that father leaves, the little boy will hanker after the love of a father. Or the father leaves and he says, you know what, fathers are bad news. Fathers abandon you. Mothers don't. Mothers are goddesses. So you get leanings here in terms of homosexuality and womanizing and all the rest and many a person is twisted in their soul because of something that happened in their childhood. The father's the identity of that child and the father, remember, carries the seed 
And so when we talk about a heavenly father in Ephesians, it says our father wanted many sons. And so he planted a seed called Jesus, hallelujah. And uh, out of that came a family. He wanted many sons. Jesus wanted a bride and the Holy Spirit wanted a temple. And so God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish or into him should not perish but have everlasting life. I came years ago, I traveled through the States and uh, it was Tim Ayers who knew the the psychologist that uh, was gonna deal with Jimmy Swaggart at the time. And Tim used to arrange choirs and he said, listen, I I go to this lady, would you like to meet her? I said, I'd love to meet her. So we go to her office, he said, would you like a session with her? I thought, man, that'll be good. So I sat down in her office, she put a tape recorder, she says, you wanna record this? I said, no, thanks. want anything on recorded. Some people record you when you're not even listening, right? (laughs) I thought, I don't need that. But um, I then began to share with her what happened in my childhood and what happened as a teenager when I ran away from home uh, when I was about 14, 15, and so on. And she turned and she said this to me, and I trust you will hear this today. She said, Sam, are you going to allow a 14, 15-year-old boy to run the rest of your life? And so often I hear in Cal, my mom did this, my dad did this, and so on and so forth. Understand, beloved, there's a heavenly father. We have a heavenly father. His eyes filled with love and tender mercies. We have a heavenly father who cares. We have a heavenly father, and when Jesus came, he would talk about his father. And he said, Philip, if you've seen me, you've seen the father. He said, the works that I do are my father's works. The words that you're hearing are my father's words. And the Bible says, God was in Christ, hallelujah, not imputing their sins unto them. So when Jesus walked this earth, Jesus was the will of God, hallelujah. He was the express image of the father. If you wanna know what the father's like, then look at Jesus. Did Jesus heal? Then the Father's a healer, hallelujah. And so Paul clearly understood this when he bowed his knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. We have a family, beloved. We have a family that's here, my mom, my dad, others, my grandmother, parents, they're in heaven today. And, uh, but they're a cloud of witnesses that are in touch with what's happening. And this suit, when I came in, man, some of my clothes were looking a bit uh, rickety when I came here, and a dear couple said, no, we're taking you out. Zell said, we can't do that. And the lady cried, Amanda, and she said, no, our family love giving, so we're taking you out to buy you a suit. And uh, David Hill, I wear this in honor of him. And uh, wasn't that beautiful? took us out and bought this suit. So if you wonder why I'm dressed a suit, Apostle Mark says, wear the jeans, jeans, Sam, you look younger. I'll do that at fire in the week. But on a Sunday, Father's Day, I'm wearing this and I'm honoring David Hill and my brother of the family in heaven, hallelujah. And he's looking down, I believe, and they're praying over us. And although we don't communicate with the dead, we do understand, beloved, that the family in heaven, the whole family in heaven and on earth is named. God wants a family. And I've been around the church for a long time, and if we're not concerned, there is a business side to every family, right? Money answers all matters, but if we lose the dimension of family, we just lose what this whole thing's about. And I love America, and you know, when I've been to Britain and preached to different parts of the world, the British know how to show royalty. Buckingham Palace, and now the king was the queen, and all the Grenadier Guards, and all the rest of it. And when you come to America, America is Hollywood. No one makes a movie like Hollywood. Nobody can make a movie like America. I can watch an American movie and my daughter Bonnie turns to me and says, Daddy, are you crying again? I say, yes, I'm crying. These American actors just know how to jerk you. <laughs> they do. You get me? But beloved, <laughs> there's a danger in it. There's a danger in it. Because I can get up here and I can put on a preaching act. But this is not a movie. This is the real deal. And the Father's looking for those that will worship Him in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. No masks, no act. Okay, this is the real thing. And so when Jesus comes to that little woman at the well and uh, she says, why are you talking to us? You Jews don't talk to us, Samaritans and rah, rah, rah. As he talks to her, she starts realizing, I'm with a spiritual man here. This man looks at me differently and she begins to talk about worshipers and Jesus says, girl, you've had five husbands, 
The one you're living with is not your husband. Now let me share with you. And she says, you must be the Messiah. She says, that I am, I'm Christ the Messiah. And I look at you with purer eyes than that to behold evil. I'm not messed up with a father wound. I don't have any twisted way. I look at younger women as sisters and older women as mothers, right? Of purer eyes than to behold evil. But then he says something to this lady. He says, Father, when she starts talking about worship and starting now to act spiritual like often people do when you're bringing the gospel to them, she says, Father is seeking worshipers. What you need, my girl, is a father. So whatever happened as, you, as a child, um, you know, I've had people say to me, well, they were molesters as children. I say, well, show me the body. Show me that little girl's body. It's changed. Every seven years, the body changes. Every year, your top layer of skin goes. So you're physically changing. Where can that thing exist? Only in your memory. And once you're born again into the family of God, you have a heavenly father and he will never molest you. He'll never abuse you. He'll never take advantage of you in any way. He will nourish, cherish, feed, guide, and protect you. He loves you with an everlasting love. In fact, with a love, Paul says, that passes understanding. And so I believe just in our relationship with the Father, there's a healing process that takes place. And I know we do sozo here in North Palm, but it goes deeper because there's an ongoing work. And Jesus, wherever he went, if you look at Matthew 7, 11, he says, if you then being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father who is in heaven give good things? Would you say good things? God the Father gives good things to those who ask Him. James 1.17, every good gift and every perfect gift comes from above, coming down from the Father of lights in whom is no variation or shadow of turning. And then Ephesians 1.3 says, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us, has blessed. Would you say has blessed? Would you say I am blessed? Say my heavenly Father has blessed me and he continues blessing me with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So when I talk about my Christian walk, it's a Christian walk, but it's a walk with the Father, and we heard last week, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Now there's only, you know, there's two fathers. In John 8, uh, Jesus is ministering to the Jewish people and we need to listen carefully to these things because they said, we're of our father Abraham. He said, if you were of your father Abraham, you would have received me because I come from the father. Understand, these are Jewish people. He says, in fact, you're of your father the devil. Wow. John chapter eight. So there's two families and there's only two families. You're either in the family of God or you're in the family of Satan. And people don't like to hear that, beloved, but that's the truth. They talk about the brotherhood of all men. That's, that's garbage. That's a deception of the devil. We have to move out of the family of Satan into the family of God. Jesus said, you must be born again. He came unto his own, his own received him not, but as many as received him to them gave the power to become the sons of God who are born not of flesh nor of blood, but of the will of God, hallelujah. Born into the family of God. We have to change families. So either you're in the family of the devil or you're the family of God. And the problem was in the beginning in the garden of Eden, beloved, Adam and Eve missed it. They had a father. They had a father that talked with them in the cool of the day. They knew the peace that passes all understanding. They they knew what it was to have heaven connected to earth. They knew what it was to have the Father loving them, to walk in that beautiful aroma of His presence, to enjoy the garden until the serpent came. And you know the story of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and Eve took part, took of it, and the contact with the heavenly Father was broken. Listen to me, the world lost a daddy. The Lord lost his children. And ever since then, father's heart was broken. He immediately, as you know, when he found them, he killed an animal and he covered them with animal skin, speaking of the fact that he's a good father and he covers his kids, doesn't expose them. He loves them and looks after them. 
And right then he said, Satan, you've come and messed. You are a murderer. Jesus called Satan a murderer from the beginning. You've come and lied to my kids. You've deceived them. You've twisted my word. And uh, as the father of lies and a murderer, you have now brought death and destruction, thorn and thistle, pain and anguish to mankind. On your belly you shall go. Oh, hallelujah. You don't get away with this stuff, devil, and you're gonna burn in hell forever. So anyone who's serving the devil, wake up and smell the coffee, man. You're on your way to a really, really, really terrible eternity if you don't turn to Jesus because Jesus is the only way, truth and life and the only way to come back to the Father. And so mankind lost it and sickness and disease and pain and destruction and wars and everything that we've had to go through is because of the detour that took place when humanity left home, so to speak, left the Father. And the whole gospel is the wonderful news and the wonderful story of God who so loved the world that He sent His only begotten Son who came down the Milky Way of time into the arena of human affairs and said, Father, we've tested them with the law and they cannot keep it. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do it for them. I want you to hear this, beloved, because out of His love, God realized that mankind couldn't live it and not living it is a dangerous thing. I don't want to spend, people talk about suicide. Let me tell you, to commit suicide, the first minute in hell will be worse than anything you could ever suffer here. Hell is no joke. Hell separation from God and the eternal flames where the worm dies not, the maggots that eat uh, uh, bodies when they buried, you know the story. Those worms will never die. Outer darkness, terrible torment. If you want something of that, you can look at a, a video on YouTube about uh, the man who spent 22 minutes in hell and you can get that on YouTube, 22 or 23 minutes in hell and he gives all the scriptures and so on. We need to wake up, beloved. There's a hell to shun and every person we know is either going to hell or heaven. There's no in between on this thing. But God's will, the Bible says, God's will is that not any should perish. God's will for every person is to spend eternity with Him in, in heaven. God loves every man, woman, boy and girl. And He, in, in His love that passes understanding deeper than the deepest sea, higher than the highest heaven, arms, hallelujah, that are not shortened, that they cannot save, ears that are not heavy, that they cannot hear, He will hear the cry of the most uh, putrid sinner, if you like, the most filthy, the most diabolical, those that have done the worst things that you can imagine. He is a God who's open and says, I'm not gonna, I didn't come to condemn them, said Jesus, I came to save them because he cares, he cares, he cares. So when we sing here on a Sunday, beloved, I'm always conscious the Holy Spirit came on the day of Pentecost, right? And he's called the Spirit of the Father. Jesus said, I'm gonna pray the Father that he will send the Holy Spirit when I go away, it's profitable for you. And the Holy Spirit came on the day of Pentecost. And so in this meeting and when we gather together, understand and wherever we are, there's the Spirit of the Father. You basically, in him we live, move and have our being. We are moving in the love of God. I said to them on healing on, on Wednesday night, we were talking and God began to flow in the gifts of the Spirit there. God's a healing spirit. He doesn't get sick. God doesn't get jealous. God doesn't get twisted and buckled and bent. You understand, He just loves unconditionally. And so when we come into the presence of God like this, beloved, we can just drink in the liquid love of God. We can just bask in the sunlight of His love. We can know, Father, that you love us more than we could ever understand. You love us with a love so deep. Lord, and I pray today that you would impart to Eden everyone here that might not know that love. That, Father, you would minister your love, Holy Ghost, that your anointing would break the shackles. Those that have been abused or tormented or had things happen to them that caused them to doubt the love of a father, that today there would be a healing flow that you would minister to every life, your Father, as only you can. That not one will leave this place without knowing beyond any shadow of a doubt that you love them beyond anything they could understand. 
John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whoever, whoever, whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And then the first epistle of John verse 3, 16 says, In this you know, in this you understand, in this you comprehend that God loves you in that He gave His Son to die for you. Beloved God, when Jesus died on the cross, understand that He was being separated from the Father. He was made sin with your sin. This is part of the good gift. Every good and perfect gift that comes down from above is in fact Jesus. And at Calvary's cross, Jesus took your place. He took the place of the vilest sinner. He took the place of every person. I don't wanna name sins here today, but I don't care where you're at. Understand this, Jesus at Calvary's cross paid in full for your sin. He suffered in agony and he cried, Eli, Eli, love us abachthani. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? This was for mankind's sin. Listen carefully. God says clearly that he so loved the whosoever and the whosoever may come. And Jesus said, whoever comes to me, I will in no wise cast out. I don't care how far you've driven, how far you've backslidden, how far you've walked away from God. His arms are not shortened that they cannot save. And so in the Bible, beloved, when we look at the goodness of God and understand His goodness and His mercy and love, we see a story of two sons. There's two families and there's two sons. And as we look at this one, we have a picture of what it looks like even in the church today with many that have come into Christ, who are born again, who have become children of God. They put on the Lord Jesus Christ. They know that when the Bible says, he that has Christ has life. He that has not Christ does not have life. They've received Jesus, but they walk as Christians and they walk in ignorance of the love of the Father and relationship with the Father. Many in the church are just looking at the Father for what they can get out of Him. He is a loving, giving God and He gives and He gives and He gives and He gives because He loves giving. But understand this, that prodigal son, that's all he saw. Father, give me my inheritance. Give me my blessing. I'm blessed with heaven's best. I'm blessed coming in, blessed going out. We are blessed every which way, but we are blessed to be a blessing. And this young man, you understand, put it on himself. He just wanted to take it in and lavish living. He used his inheritance and wasted his inheritance until finally you find him, as you know, hired by somebody who had him amongst the pigs. He said, oh dear God, as I eat, I'm hungry even for these caribs, you know, these husks in my father's house. What have I done? Why have I walked away from so much love? Why did I not see it? And you know the story how that when he repented in Luke 15, we find he comes home and we find the father. The father sees his boy coming. Now in those days, if you dishonored your father and mother, understand the terrors of those things. Under the law, you honored your mother and father, otherwise you could be cut off from the people. And so what the villagers would do, you dishonored your father, they'd take feces, manure, and they would throw it at that boy and say, how dare you do that to your own father? But the father runs He runs to meet the boy. The Bible tells us he fell on his neck, Jesus says, and kissed him. If you look at those words there, it's the same words for the Holy Spirit falling when Peter preached the gospel. When the Holy Spirit fell on them, the father fell on his neck and he kissed his boy. And he said, this my son that was dead is alive. Oh, thank God he's cared about the backslider. No matter how far you've drifted, you can come home today. And when you come home, let me tell you, God will kill the fatted calf. God will put shoes on your feet. He said, I'm not worthy to be killed your son anymore. Just I'll be one of the servants. He said, not on. He said, my son don't walk bare feet. My son is not a servant. You put shoes on his feet. You put a robe on his back. Listen carefully, beloved. When you come to God, He robes you with a robe of righteousness. He'll put a wedding garment on and what I felt in praying for today and the longing of the Spirit of God is for you to me leave this place knowing that though your sins were red like crimson, they shall be white as snow. God wants you, beloved, please understand this, to receive the wonderful gift of righteousness, of right standing with God. Jesus was made sin with our sins so that we could be made the righteousness of God, so that we could come into right standing with Him, so that we could know that the sins are not 
only forgiven, they removed. Under the old covenant, your sin was covered with the blood of bulls and goats. And David said, oh, how wonderful it is for a man to know his sins are covered. But in the new covenant, understand this, this is different. Your sins aren't covered, they are omitted, they are removed. They are as if they never existed. Whiter than the snow, whiter than the snow. And then we've got the older son. And that older son, you know the story how, why should he be given a party? Why should they celebrate? And he walks. And this is, this, this is the problem with the church, beloved. This is what Father's Day is all about. Father says in Malachi, where is my honor? I'm your daddy. I'm your upper daddy. Where's my honor? You receive from me. I bless you. I look after you. But where's my honor? Why don't you honor me as a daddy? And that old boy says, look at me. I've worked out in the fields and I've done this, you know, Martha type syndrome. I work and I do this and I'm doing that and I'm so busy for you. And he says, oh, son, you're moaning about a little party. You could have had a party anytime you like. But there's one thing missing, boy. You don't have a proper relationship with daddy. Because if you had a relationship with heavenly father, you would know his heart. You would know his heart's bigger than Africa, bigger than America, bigger than the universe. Listen to me. This whole beautiful universe. And I, I do this on my Facebook. I put flowers and birds. People think, what is this? But I'm praising God as creator. He made this house for me. In his love, he created this beautiful world. Jesus preached more about money than we realize, but at the same time, we need to worship God as creator. And he says, boy, all that I have is yours. You just don't have a relationship. You never come to me. You never talk to me. Beloved, all things are possible to those who believe. And Jesus said, whatever you ask the Father, he'll give it to you. You have not because you ask not. Be anxious for nothing. This Father, Jesus says, you don't have to worry and say, what will I eat? What will I drink? What will I wear? Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. Oh, listen to me. He so cared. We think we care. We love our kids, our grandkids. I pray for them and I just say, oh God, please cover them with the blood, protect them. And I'm moved, but what moves me is the love of God. It's the love of the Father in us. And we care, but how much more? Our Heavenly Father. And so you've got sons, you get givers or takers, right? Givers or takers. If we can just let the music play, because you need to hear this. But there was a son who came. A son whose name is Jesus. And he said, I'm not a prodigal. Both those boys were actually prodigals. He said, I want to know, I came to show you my father. Everything I do is my father. I just want to honor him. I want the world to know about this wonderful heavenly father. I want the world to walk and a message like this, you know, often you know how I flow because the call on my life for miracles and healings. But beloved, this is about relationship with the Father today. The biggest miracle is being born again into the family of God. And for people to know Father, that I may know Him. Oh, after 30 years, Paul was praying, oh, that I may know Him, that I may know Him, that I may know Him. God is wanting to reveal Himself. And you know, when, they, when you know God, there's no more fear. No more fear in perfect love casts out fear. God so loved you that he gave Jesus and he said, you know what, I'm giving heaven's best. I'm going to give you my son. And that son came and he said, this is how a son should live. How do you know a true son? A true son looks like the father. The most honoring thing you can do, you understand, is to honor your father by being like him. And that's what Jesus was. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. God was in Christ. God was in Christ, 2 Corinthians 5, not imputing the world's sins to them. In fact, God was saying, before you even confess, I'm making sure that your sins are forgiven, past, present, and future. 
And so Jesus came to reveal how much the Father cares. And Peter walked with him and he said, you can cast your cares on Peter 5, 7, casting all your care upon him, all your anxieties. Cast them on the Lord. But there's war coming, there's threatenings, Putin and President Biden and nuclear weapons. Who gives a whit? So would you just stand today, just stand in his presence. Forget about everybody else around you. Just these short moments, Father cares, Father cares. And he gave Jesus to be your wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, redemption. Would you raise your hands to him? 